Longer-term extracorporeal respiratory or circulatory support requires the highest standards of reliability, performance, and biocompatibility of the oxygenator and the centrifugal pump. The Maquet Cardiopulmonary Quadrux PLS system exceeds these standards. The Quadrux PLS system is the result of many years of clinical experience and extensive laboratory testing. Maquet developed and configured the system in cooperation with users around the world, allowing quick and safe handling in different work situations. While the system is built up and primed, the venous and arterial tubes stay in a sterile and transparent box before use. With a small circular motion, the oxygenator is click-fitted into its holder. Before priming the system, the oxygenator gas and water lines are connected. to confirm heat exchanger integrity. Initially, the centrifugal pump is not placed into its drive unit. The male lure ends of the two quarter inch priming lines with spikes are attached to the female lure three-way stopcock connectors on the venous line. The priming line nearest the sterile box is connected to the attached reservoir bag. For demonstration, the priming procedure here is shown with a colored solution and an infusion bag with only one port. The priming line near the centrifugal pump is now connected to the infusion bag. Instead of the accompanying priming bag, an infusion bag with two ports can also be used. The priming lines are clamped and an additional clamp between the two connectors will allow circulation of the priming solution into and out of the priming bag system where air bubbles will be eliminated. The yellow lure cap on the venous side of the oxygenator is removed. Behind this cap is an automatic de-airing membrane. This membrane allows air to pass through and out but is leak proof for fluids. When the priming line is opened, solution flows by gravity into the centrifugal pump and oxygenator. By tilting the centrifugal pump slightly, any contained air will pass into the oxygenator and escape automatically through the de-airing membrane. An air bubble below the clamp will escape when the clamp is open for a short moment. The centrifugal pump and the oxygenator are now primed and the rotoflow can be placed into the drive unit. The pump drive outlet socket, where blood flow is measured ultrasonically, must be filled appropriately with contact gel to ensure maximum contact between the pump head outlet and the flow sensor. With the pump head placed correctly into the drive unit, the black safety flap is snapped shut. The sterile lines in the box must now be primed. First, the three-way stopcock on the priming line nearest the box is opened so that remaining air in the lines can escape. The centrifugal pump is now used to actively start priming the lines in the box.
When most of the air has escaped and the priming solution reaches the three-way stopcock, it is open to direct flow toward the priming bag. The nearly empty infusion bag is now removed and the line spike is attached to the priming bag. The clamps on the priming lines are removed and the centrifugal pump is restarted. Recirculation now goes through the priming reservoir bag. Any air bubbles in the system are trapped and retained in the bag. When all air bubbles are removed, all lines are bubble free, the stopcocks on the priming lines are closed and the clamp between the two connectors is removed. Solution is now flowing through the entire system and the Rotoflow centrifugal pump speed can be increased to a high flow. The priming lines are no longer required and can be removed. To be on the safe side, the three-way stopcocks can also be disconnected and closed in a sterile way with the lure caps. Okay, the gold standard.